around. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jonathan, J-O, Jogden, Johnny Yogi, JPEG. J I'm going to show you guys how I made the song, Always Will Be. This one's for my geeks, my nerds, my music production people. So here's my session, I've tried to tidy it up a little bit and group it into parts. Um, this song started with just the piano intro thing. So there's an album called Promises by Floating Points with Pharaoh Sanders and the London Symphony Orchestra. It goes through all of these movements and it has this really cool piano sound mixed with like a high synth happening at the same time and I loved that and I actually recreated it for Instagram Reel at one point so this is where I ended up I have the Labs soft piano and that's got an echo on it Ableton's echo and then I duplicated that with a pitched up synth, it's called Ambient Element, I think that was just a preset. So it's the same part but just an octave up. Kind of sounds like that. So I added this resonator and I added another echo with the preset Nostalgia. Which adds that kind of like warbly thing that's kind of cool. So that is layered in with the piano to create this sound. Once I had that part down, it felt like one of these kind of holy kind of sounds. I don't know how to describe that, but it, like, it reminded me of almost like a Misty Edwards kind of song where she's kind of singing spontaneous parts about the throne room of God and all that kind of stuff. So I literally just like grabbed a mic and it didn't even feel like a written part. It was just kind of a spontaneous song that I was singing on top of that, which was this. Standing before you with multitudes around your throne singing holy. Also I have these ambient parts going on, so I've got ambient pad, a lot of samples here. Just a nice pad thing. Got that little cello texture which I believe is from Yeah, so actually at the end of the song skipping ahead slightly, but there's this string part which was orchestrated by my friend Sammy Lee. So I actually just took his cello line, which I thought was really cool, and I took that part out and put it in the intro just to add a little bit of texture there. So you can kind of hear that in there. Um, just trying to create that moody feeling, basically. So, a bunch of ambient sounds. The next thing I did was drum loops. So there's an R&B loop, which is this little... And then I also added this... Uh, there's a loop called the Revo Kick Pattern. Um, I don't know where I got this from. Some drum pack. <laughs> so I basically just chopped up a little bit of the drums to give it that... Uh, uh. But I also layered it up with this kick sound and then this snare from the count which is such a nice snare. So those kick and snare sounds are layered up with this loop and then there's also a white noise thing. So all of that together creates the pre-chorus drum beat. So I really like that beat and it just added some energy to this kind of section of the track. But it felt like it needed some beefy bass, you know what I mean? So I ended up adding some sub bass, I believe it is. Which is really growly. For this one I used the Contact Retro Machines sub bass and then I added on Decapitator, which is a big like overdrive thing. And this is going kind of crazy. The, the uh, drive is pretty high, it's on the N style, I don't know what that is. And I've turned on PUNISH! It's literally blown out. Oh, I also automated the drive, which you can barely hear doing anything because it's all just so... brah. But yeah, you can see it kind of grows at certain points, like here. Just add some movement so it wasn't just all 
drive the whole time. Um, I found this sample of piano stacks that's kind of in there. But that added some cool energy to it. And that's pretty much all that's going on there. So for this pre-chorus section, I remember trying out a few different ideas, but as I was working on this beat, I had that melody in my head of like the ba 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 da, da. So I ended up coming up with this little chorus part vocally. One bride, one song, one king to come. This race we run till we see you. So with this part, we have a lead vocal, we have some pitched up vocals, I believe. Fred, what's up? That's a BV, got two of those. No. And then I have a pitched up one, an octave up. What? Fred, what's up? What? So that one, I believe, is with Little Alter Boy. Yes, it is. So Little Alter Boy, great plugin, used in loads of pop stuff. All those like pitch shifted vocals. So that was it. For a long time, that was just the song. I had this intro part, and then I had the beat that comes in, and that little vocal part, and that was the that was all I had. And then, a lot of the time when I'm writing songs, it's the sections kind of come to me at different times, and often in the car, I'll be driving along, a song comes into my head, and I'm like, oh yeah, I need to record this and use this. So I made a voice memo when I was writing this song, because the part for the chorus came to me while I was driving, and... I didn't want to lose it, so I was trying to describe it to myself, and I listened back to it before, and it's so funny. Alright, so the vibe for this, you know that Bon Iver song? Mitchiton, I think it's called? You know? Anyway, big bass hit when it goes into that, right? Big bass so, hit. So, um, till we see you. <laughs> So dramatic. You know, just like crazy offbeat fills, weird sounds, like everything just happening. Everything. A little like <laughs> in the background. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a pitch fan. <laughs> Steering wheel driven. Anyway, you get the idea. This was me trying to explain what I was hearing in my head. So this chorus part is my attempt to translate that very thing. So it hits on that big one chord. The thing I was trying to explain. So let's start with the drums. I guess the drums are most interesting. This is made up of a lot of sounds, as you can see. Just lots of dropped in samples all over the place. The first one is just a kick. Again, this is from the count. And there's another one from Lex Luger, I believe. A clap from the count. We have this sound, which is like a tarp. A snap. With some nice reverb on it. I really like this little drum break in the middle. So, I just chopped up a few kicks and stuff to make this little... That part was really fun. Because the first time in the break, it just leaves space. It boom, cat and then just loads of space. But the second time it comes around, I want a little drum break in there to like help you feel the rhythm a bit more. So I enjoyed making that little section. There's also some big bass hits. So we have the sub bass. That was really me trying to capture that Bon Iver sound. But this is the sub bass with Decapitator and I believe, yes, there's a pitch bend on it. So it actually goes an octave down. Underneath this, I have a whole section called Chonk. So I have the HTF Brass Dangerous Stab. That sounds... all like big techno dubstep kind of songs. We'll probably have that in. So the Chonk. I tried so many ways to create this sound, but in the end it was just the sub bass with that horn blast. And that seemed to work. Even just that short cut off at the end. Um, because it cuts on the, the part with the drums because it hits with that snare that has the reverb the instant cutoff kind of works now in between was just so much stuff so I had this like 
That's like a saxophone played backwards, I think. I reversed that part. A lot of reverse sounds. Same there. So if I re-reverse it back to forwards, it sounds like this. But then backwards. So I like the idea of a lot of reverse sounds going into this, because it's like, bah, big release. And then like slowly pulling back in. Bah, and then again. So pretty much every gap I just tried to find a different sample or a different little fun thing to sprinkle in there. Um, just to make those gaps more interesting. The piano, we're playing a few little lines in there. It's just that sound from the intro again, but with different things going on. Okay, now this section has a little bit more. So, in between these big hits with the breaks, there's this little... Dun, bam, 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 bam. So again, we've got the drums. Just lots of samples layered up. You get the idea. There's a little drum loop, this drum loop chill. Um, again, I'm using the Count's kick, a little rim thing, um, some nice bits in the fill. Uh, this is like a... along with... <laughs> and they're slightly apart. But up, but up. Lots of loops, and the white noise comes back in there too. And a cymbal reversing. Classic. Classic way to build the hype, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, and the big uh, distorted bass comes back in for that section too. Extras, what's in extras? Oh yes. Love this harp sample, so crispy and like, mmm. Um, so I just chopped it up a little bit. Let me hear the original sample, what's actually in it. So that's how the original one goes. Um, but I just heard this melody. Da, 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 da. So I took that first note, repitched it down five, and then down two. So, created that nice little melody. Um, we also have a big synth in this part. The second time it comes around, I wanted like a big bright synth. So this is just a serum patch. Which I really like. There's also this deep piano part. Which just comes into like accent that part. Oh yeah, we have some classic pitched up little vocal samples. Again, this is just tons of reverb, compression, little altar boy. You know, they just added little interesting things the second time around. There's also a DX7 sample from Contact. just brought a bit of 80s vibe into that section, <laughs> but I think it works well. That's basically all the sounds for this section, and then when we get to the outro, um, it's just like everything. That kind of loop, the boom, um, but with the big serum synth, the DX7 sound comes back in, and then the strings, which are one of my favourite parts of this track. The string part is done by my friend Sammy Lee, who does a lot of orchestration stuff and it just sounds awesome. So, it sounds like this. And it's kind of side chain, so it's doing this kind of swelling, growing thing. And then when it gets to the outro, doing all of that fun stuff in there, as well as some weird vocals which I recorded, which are basically just me singing Future Forever, which is the album title, and also merch available now. <laughs> no, it is though. If you go on my website, jonathanogden.co.uk, I'll just click the merch button at the top and it will take you 
to where you can get one of these. Plug over. That was it. So I basically was singing some random stuff, some oohs and ahs, and the words future forever, and then reversed them to make them sound more like whoop, repitched them into different keys and all that stuff, and then a bunch of reverb, compression, you know, the usual sauce. And that's basically all the pieces, apart from, of course, the group vocals. So as you can see here, I have them in four groups. All together, it sounds like this. So this one, it was a big old session, I can tell you guys that. It was big. So it looks all neat and tidy here, you know, just four channels, four convenient vocal parts, but this is how it actually was. So I had my guide track, my cue track that I sent out to everybody, and then I think we have about 50, yeah, 55 channels of audio. And within there I would line everyone up, kind of by eye, and it was a real pain. <laughs> um, and then... I did it all in one go, and then I added another batch, did all of those 55 channels again, and again, and again. So there's four groups of 55 layers in each one. And then I just saved those out so that I wasn't having to work with like 200 layers of vocals in my Ableton session. I was able to work with four groups, which is a lot easier. So these 50 sessions, you can see down the side, I've panned them, some of them hard left, some of them hard right, and then they gradually move closer to the middle. So Every vocal is positioned slightly differently in relation to your ears in the left and right space. Try to get like 200 people from all around the world to have this consistent sound and stay in time. It was tricky, I'll be honest with you guys, but it sounded really cool and I was so excited with how it all came together. So that was the final like secret sauce that this song needed, I think, and it just came out so well. And I'm so happy and so thankful for everyone who sent vocals in. So if that was you, but that's it. That's how I made Always Will Be. I hope you guys enjoyed the song. And if you haven't heard it, go check it out. I will put a link somewhere. Also, I got a new one coming out. It's gonna be April the 1st. It's a song called Living Water. Super excited about it. I worked on it with my friend Sam Ock, who is a legend and amazing music producer. He's worked on all kinds of stuff. He's a rapper, he's an artist, he's a producer. He's done stuff for AMP. He's done like, produced for K-pop artists, he's like a bit of a legend, so really excited that he was able to work on this next song. I think you're gonna like it. I hope this was interesting, I hope it was fun to look at the process behind the song. If you got any questions, any other songs you want to know about, I can do more of these videos. That's it, thank you guys for watching, have a good one. New song out April 1st, keep an eye out for that. The end. My heart was feeling so dry, but if I'm gonna survive